This class, Dr. Malachi York, could you please explain the beginning? By the beginning, I assume you mean the book of Genesis, because you have the beginning talking about creation in the book of Genesis, and then you have a beginning even in the Quran of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. You have a beginning of the Hindus, beginning of the Baha'i, mm -hmm. beginning of the Sikhs, beginning of the Buddhists. You got a beginning of people all over the world. There's many of the Native Americans have a story at the beginning. Mm -hmm. None of these stories go back as far as the Sumerian story of the beginning, which is recorded on cuneiform tablets, mm -hmm. right, called the Enuma Elish, Atrahasi, etc., etc. Et and their tablets, especially the language cuneiform, the Wedge script, itself comes out of Egypt, out of a language called Nuwapic, mm -hmm. right, which is an ancient mystical language. They have many dialects in Egypt, Demotics, Heretics, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, that associate with Aramic or Hebrew. And the reason why I say that is because I want to make clear when we start talking about Genesis in the Bible and we use this language that they have in the Bible that they're calling Hebrew when we know Hebrew didn't really exist because Abraham or Abraham, a Chaldean who wasn't a Hebrew, was called a Hebrew. He was a Chaldean and he worshipped the Chaldean gods, the sun god. He had introduced to the god Elion El by a man called Melchizedek who wasn't a Hebrew who was a ruler of another land called Salam, which was the birthplace of Jerusalem before Jerusalem became Jeru from Jebus, one of Canaan's sons, and Salam from that ancient kingdom. So when you say beginning, right, you got to understand that there's different beginnings, and the Bible beginning is not the oldest beginning. Though Christians and Muslims alike would like to think that the Bible that they hold in their hand, when it says in the beginning, mm -hmm. is the beginning of everything. But there's certain things that happen down through that same book that reveal that this couldn't have been the very beginning. Because statements like the goal of that land is good, mm -hmm. mentioned in Genesis chapter 2. And it's talking about the land of Cush when you look at it in Hebrew as they're calling it. And that's, that's called Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And they try to give you the, uh, try to get you to believe that the Bible had its beginning over in the Middle East mm -hmm. as opposed to Ethiopia which is in Africa right. but the statement about the four rivers keeps ending down from the Tigris Euphrates they mm -hmm. pour down into Nubia which is ancient Egypt right. which is Cush, Ham, Foot, Mizraim, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. Those are families of that area so right. the beginning changes if you go back to the land mm -hmm. in which they say the beginning in Genesis is talking about mm -hmm. if we get over there and actually stop and look we'll find that the beginning story changed in Egypt. Whole mm -hmm. concept, though it sounds very similar. Mm -hmm. You follow? You with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to look at it, let's say, we'll start with uh, Genesis chapter one, verse one. That's always the best place to start, right? Mm -hmm. You see, Bereshith, Barra Elohim, Eth Hashemayim, Wa'eth Rith, Haharit. All right, um, this translates closely as Bet. The first letter there is the Hebrew letter Bet. Mm -hmm. Bet is symbolic for the Hebrew word Bet for house mm -hmm. or abode. Something in which something is encased. Mm -hmm. The original ancient root from the ancient Chaldean language is Bet. Mm -hmm. Bet and it means where a person goes inside and goes to sleep or rest. Mm -hmm. Maybe bed came from that in English. Mm -hmm. But the original initial letter in most Semitic languages, mm -hmm. after you get past the alif, mm -hmm. you come to the letter bet, or ba, or be, or beth, mm -hmm. and all of them keep coming back, or beta in Greek, mm -hmm. that which is not Semitic, but one of the European languages, mm -hmm. but all of them got this letter B. Mm -hmm. And B, for some strange reason, is the first letter of the Torah. Mm -hmm. It's the first letter of the Quran of the Muslim. Because yeah. though they say, that the Quran started in the uh, 610, so and so and so and so and so, and Muhammad was in a cave, etc. Et mm -hmm. The first thing said to him was, Iqra bismi rabbika ladi khalaq. Mm -hmm. Right? Which meant read or recite in the name of your Rab. Rab is a Judaic name mm -hmm. for Rabbi, Rabboni, mm -hmm. right? Master or teacher. So in the Quran, Iqra bismi rabbika. Allah the Khalaka is no more than read in the name of your Rabbi, really. But it becomes Lord which is equivalent to Yahweh or Yahoah or Jehovah and we know that's a physical being as we explained last week mm -hmm. and, and this can continue but so that the Quran first revelation is Bet Ismi mm -hmm. 
So they start saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim or Bismillah El Rahman Al Rahim, however they want to distort mm -hmm. it as they create their grammatical mm -hmm. games. But it starts off with that letter B too. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the book of the New Testament of the Bible, the mm -hmm. Apocryphus, and then you come down with Biblos as the first word. And that a Greek word biblos, meaning little book, right. is the very first word in the first letter in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Biblos. So now you go from the Torah or the mm -hmm. Old Testament, and the first letter is ba mm -hmm. for barashith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to the New Testament, and it's biblos mm -hmm. with a b from beta from Greek. And then you go to the Quran, another book born out of these books, so a lot of Muslims may not realize it, mm -hmm. but their religion was born out of Judaism and Christian, Christianity, mm -hmm. right? And you get another one, Bismi, like in Bismillah. Bismillah. And it's the same thing, another letter, Be. All these letters symbolize the same thing when they go down to what they call the hidden meaning of it, mm -hmm. and that's the house or the abode where something, where people rest and wake up, mm -hmm. go to sleep and wake up. So when we go back to Genesis chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 1, we first got to understand that there is no word beginning. Okay. But what are they calling it? Beginning. You see, the letter B is mm -hmm. there again. Sure. B is the second point. B, Bena. Bena, son. Benaya in the ancient language. Mm -hmm. B, Benaya symbolizes to build or construct mm -hmm. something. You see that? Mm -hmm. So now that gives you another outlook on what the Bible is trying to say when you look at it from Benaya, beginning. Mm -hmm. And now go to the Hebrew and you see Barashith. Mm -hmm. And the word Rashith is the same word Ra'as or Rashush, which means to be the head on a body, mm -hmm. to be up front. A president is called a Ra'is. Mm -hmm. This is a leader. That which began something, at the head of something. But because the be is there, be in Hebrew means inside of. Not at the beginning, not at the start of, but rather inside of something. So therefore, the word here, Rashi, for head or beginning as they're saying, for the beginning, is being prefixed by B. So they're talking about a period of time and that this event is taking place within the beginning. Mm. This is not at the beginning. Okay. Like a second and we know it's not at the beginning mm -hmm. for several reasons. Exactly. One, the age of the planet versus the age of the sun and the moon. Mm. The minerals found on the planet, like diamonds mm. coming from coal, and in order for there to have been diamonds on a planet or gold on a planet, you had to have mineral and ore. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of yeah. thousands of years of compression. Forget the fossils mm -hmm. that you want to argue about. Forget the dinosaurs that you think you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Forget all of those things. And let's come around to some things that you cannot deny. Let's come around to the fact that you cannot deny gold. You can investigate gold. You can find how long it takes to make gold. And gold is in the Bible in Genesis chapter 2. And God makes a decision on gold on whether it is told, as it says in Hebrew, good or bad gold. So there's not just gold. Because if any gold you dig up is pure gold, it's always good. Mm -hmm. So if God refers to that gold as good gold, then it must, as I said before, have been bad gold. That means men must have came in and mixed in copper or brass or nickel, whatever they mix with gold to bring it down from 24 karat gold, pure gold, mm -hmm. all the way down to 18, 14, 10, and some people not walking around three karat gold, I'm mm -hmm. thinking they got on gold. You know what I'm saying? But so men must have existed yeah. who were alchemists, and the only ones we know who knew the knowledge of transforming gold and alchemists were alchemists with nothing but the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And those Kushites called Ethiopians, where they say the gold was good, is Egypt, ancient Egypt included Aksum, the ancient name of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It was all one land. It wasn't a separate place. All Libya, all the way to Morocco, all the way to that whole northern region, partially down the south to Kenya, Uganda, on up, all that was called Tamari or Tamare, which became Egypt. Only a small portion of it was called Kemet, mm -hmm. where the Kemites settled. So you have myth mixed in with fact. When you start talking about that being the very beginning, mm -hmm. and you try to make that look like a fact, 
when the fact is that gold is mentioned in Genesis and gold goes back Genesis chapter 2 verse 12 mm -hmm. right it goes back further than your Adam and Eve story mm -hmm. but what happens is you can stop any reverend mm -hmm. any Christian on the street and ask them a very simple question to find out if they can make the decision between myth and reality mm -hmm. and you almost always get caught when you ask them do you believe in unicorns mm -hmm. do unicorns exist I'm talking about a creature that belongs to what they call a horse or mule family mm -hmm. that has a horn in the center of his head. A mythological creature called a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Do they exist? Mm -hmm. And the answer would be, turn your Bible to Numbers. Chapter 23, verse 22. Then someone else turned to the same book, the 24th chapter, the 8th verse. Mm -hmm. Someone else look at Job, mm -hmm. and you'll see the 39th chapter, the 9th verse. Someone look at Psalms. The 29th chapter and the 6th verse. And here, six times throughout the Bible, including the, the Old Testament all the way to the Psalms. The original Numbers is a part of the original five books of Moshe or Moses, the original Torah. All the way down through Job and to Psalms, we see the word. And the word we find there is Rehemi. Rehemi. Mm -hmm. And the word Rehemi, if you look it up, means a unicorn. So a unicorn is mentioned in the Bible because verse 22 says El, because they have God in English, but that's not Elohim and it's not Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It's the El. Mm -hmm. El brought them out of Egypt. There you'll find where Mizraim, mm -hmm. one of the sons of Cush and Ham. So that's those Egyptians was also Negroes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Mm -hmm. So what was thought to be a mystical Mythological creature must have really exist if you believe in the Bible. If you firmly believe in the Bible, then you have to stand on the fact that unicorns exist. Now, but everybody, anybody who studies zoology or zoology will tell you there's no such thing as a unicorn. None has ever been found. There's never been no bones, no discovery, no undevelopments. There was a mythological creature. But according to the Bible, it's not a mythological creature. It really exists because God would not use a mythological creature as an example. That's true. You follow? So now how do we deal with that? Do we accept the fact that in the Bible there's some things that are mythological? Or do we say unicorns really exist? Mm. If we say unicorns really exist, then we are agreeing to the mythological. And then we have to say how many other things that we've been taught and accepted as facts are merely myth. That becomes another problem that people don't want to address. You go to your Bible, you read it, you look at the commentaries, and look and try to investigate it and find you'll see a word there in the Hebrew there, the language they're saying the Bible's in. So now how do you explain that? That takes us back to Genesis. When you start talking about the beginning, the creation of the sun, the moon, the stars, popping out a man's rib and closing the body up and not calling it surgery and taking from that rib and creating a woman and not calling it genetic splicing because you don't want to use the modern terms because if you start using in modern terms, you start using scientific data, you're going to have to continue with it, and then scientific data in modern terms might disagree with the mythological beliefs of your Bible. And then you'll have a problem, because then you'll have a problem with how a woman have a baby without a male, which would be the Blessed Mother Mary. That'll become a problem to you. So then you'll say, to save face and to make money and to capitalize on people, that's because you got to have faith. You'll start using the word faith. You start using the word belief. You start using all kind of words that have nothing to do with confirmation and the statement, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You need the truth. You need confirmation. That has to be pushed out the window in certain churches. And just say, oh, it ain't about no facts. Because we're looking at dinosaurs. They're finding dinosaurs. And they predate the Genesis story. They're finding fossils. They're finding pottery. Pottery in North America that predate the Bible story in the Middle East. And when they're finding these things, they have a problem. The problem is, do they say that our timeline in the Bible is wrong? Or do they just face that people reading the King James Version, the St. Jerome, the Tinsdale, the Jehovah's Witness Version, which are versions of translations, are missing what's really happening here because their pastors and their reverends have not taken the time to learn the language. So, are you saying that it's very important for them to understand the language of the Bible that was written in for them to get the actual meaning? Yes, exactly what I'm saying. Just imagine what that sounds like. That, just imagine what it sounds like for a person to come into a foreign country and he's in the middle of a city and he's lost because he can't speak the language and he can't read the language. He could be standing right on Peachtree 
downtown under the sign, be a professor, a genius, a scientist, right? And walk up to a bum with no education and say, where is Peach Street or Drive? And the bummer look up and say, fool, can't you see that sign right there? It's right in front of you. And the bum will stagger off saying, how dumb can you be? Sign right there in front of you. Because the bum recognized the language on the sign and knew that was Peach Street. But the foreigner who may be a genius in everything else couldn't do that. I'm saying that to say, a brother may be a genius in faith. He may be a genius in belief, he may be an excellent preacher, he may be a good singer, he may stomp around and rev up the spirit in the church. He's like the foreigner. He's very intelligent, but he can't read the sign, so he's losing people. He's telling people the wrong street. The first inquiry is why is the street named after the peach? You have to be in Georgia to understand that this is the state of the country. Then you understand why there's a peach there. If you don't get to the roots of why things happen, who put that there? Why are there signs? Well, so the preacher could be a good preacher, be a wonderful person, be totally sincere in his heart, be out there thinking he's doing the best he's doing, but he is misleading people because he hasn't taken the time to master the language. And nowadays there's no excuses. Because you got online Bible computer, you got Strong's Concordances, you got Logos Bible, that's right. You can get in there with a computer, spend a little time, and you go to college and you got a computer. So if you got a computer, you got these software. And if you got these software, and then you come to your congregation and talk about faith and belief over fact, then you are purposely trying to deceive people. Because we know you know better, because I have the software. And I can go in and verify Hebrew and check words anytime I want. I got the software in the Quran, where I can go in and check the Arabic to see if it makes sense. And Father, you have the ability to do that. So then the next question should be, why don't you? Because right. you come across stuff like a unicorn and you won't be able to explain it. You come across great whales. And whales, we know in the Bible, it says in Genesis, there were great whales. We know that whales are mammals mm-hmm. who were on land first, then went into sea. Right. Yeah. They proved they not only have lungs, they have gills and lungs, and they also have hips, which means they used to walk. This is a fact. Mm-hmm. The great whale. When you look up great whale, what do you get in there? You get fish, the Hebrew word dug. For fish? No. You get tannin. Mm-hmm. A dragon. The word tannin dragon is there. Yeah. Now, is there such thing as dragons? When we go to Revelations, we also see the battle between Michael and a dragon. What kind of dragon? A Chinese dragon? You know what I'm saying? Some creature who spits out fire that we see in movies all around us. Is there such thing as a real dragon? Has dragons been found any place on the planet? Has bones of dragons been found? Is it possible for a creature to be part reptilian or dragon beast and spit out fire? Or is this another mythological statement? Because you see whale. And then the word for whale is hut. The word for fish is dug. This head word is tanin. Another word they use with devil even. So now that's been in Genesis, what's that? Thank you. Genesis 121. They make it right there clear to you. So now what we're up against? Are dinosaurs real? Because a whale is a dinosaur just like a dolphin is. You know what else is a dinosaur? An alligator is a dinosaur. A turtle is a dinosaur. Most of your lizards are dinosaurs. They make it wrong, man. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus is a dinosaur. These are creatures that have been around longer than your Bible and are in other people's records in other parts of the world, in Egypt, in South America. And they talk about these creatures. They call them sea creatures, but they're not dragons. Dragon is a far eastern concept out of China. An Asian concept, something that comes out of their own rituals, and they still exist to this day. Go to any Chinese city on New Year's and have dragons dancing down the streets. But the Bible's making reference to them, calling the whale a dragon. Mm-hmm. If you want to separate the two, because mm-hmm. we're in a day and time of information, mm-hmm. and God would not leave us stupid. Sure. But if we want to wobble around in old ways and not bring our way of life. Because it's more than a religion now. Christianity is no longer a religion. Christianity is now a way of life. Stop calling it just another religion. It has to become your way of life. You have to live it. You have to breathe it. You have to think it. And if you're going to go to the guidelines of your way of life, call the Holy Bible, you have to go in here letter by letter, word by word, from the original language that it was put in, so you can grasp where it's trying to take you. Otherwise, you're going to be lost like so many people are. And misled by blind leading the blind. You follow? Okay, let me finish my that. So we get a statement in the beginning. You understand those bees? That letter bait in the house within ba is there ba rashish. And then it says barra. The word barra, right, again is another bee. It is to redo something. Bar, to make something. Because the word create in the English language, creating comes from the word to grow. 
Look up the word creation and you'll find that the word creation in any dictionary, its root is to grow. Mm -hmm. Now, to grow means you already have to have conditions. Mm -hmm. You need the weather. You need the rain. You need the clouds. And you need the soil. Mm -hmm. And all of that has to work in rhythm mm -hmm. at the right time. Because you plant the seeds at the wrong time, you're growing nothing. Mm -hmm. If you had the wrong kind of seed for the wrong environment, you're growing nothing. You know what I'm saying? You just can't grow apples in the wrong place and they can't grow oranges up there in Canada. Mm -hmm. It just ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So when they speak about creation and creating man from the dust of the ground or growing him, because that's what the word means, the condition in where he was located has to be right. and it has to be right for that man. And if scientists have proved that the oldest people on the planet has been proven, regardless of new fake data they need to make themselves feel important, talking about some bones they found in whales, which is crap, right? It's been proven that the oldest bones is Uganda, Africa. Then God shaped man out of the African soil. That must be the richest soil and the best on the planet. And that soil is the same way where he said the best gold comes from. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yes. Right, so we got to get these points in our minds. Because now we say, when it says here, inside or within the beginning, within this state of the head of things, it says, bara. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. There was a remaking. A making of something. To take things from things here and make them. Mm -hmm. To grow something. Mm -hmm. And it says, what's grown there? Or who did it? It says, Elohim. Elohim. Or Elohim when mispronounced. Elohim. Mm -hmm. Elohim, as you heard many times, is a plural form of Elo, mm -hmm. right? The source, the creator, the God, anything you want to call it. In this case, it's a plural. Mm -hmm. So it says, at the in the in, in the beginning of things, mm -hmm. things were being made mm -hmm. by a group of beings, right? Mm -hmm. What did they make? Is the next question. It says F the. Mm -hmm. Then what do you have? Ha Shem. Hashem, Hashem, Shem means up there, mm -hmm. Hashem, Shema, Hebrew, up there, mm -hmm. but this is Shemayim, Shemayim, Shemayim is plural again, mm -hmm. like in the head of things, mm -hmm. when things were being made by a group of beings, mm -hmm. what things did they make? They made heavens, mm -hmm. they made things up there, you see, but they're giving you an opposite. They're making you think that these gods were up there making things down there. Yeah, that's true. But if you look at the Hebrew for the word Shem, the root of heaven, mm -hmm. in Hebrew it means there, Shem, up there, not down here. Mm -hmm. So there was a things created up there first. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there couldn't have been a war in heaven before there was a conflict on earth. So the heavens had to be created first by a group of beings called Elohim before they started to do some work on the earth. Because right. heavens is first, and right after that it says what? Well, F and the Ha Arith. Ha means the. And the Harith. What does the word earth mean? Ground. Place. This planet we were standing on. So first they created a heavens and a heavenly host like Genesis 2 would tell you. Mm -hmm. And then they worried about what was taking place or grew things mm -hmm. on earth. It's a total different meaning as opposed to in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. That's quite confusing if you don't probe into the language. The beginning, you, go ahead. If you don't know the language you would never be able to see it. You would just read it like plain. Right, like and you're messing with your soul. Mm -hmm. You're reading this book. This ain't no comic book. You're reading this book as a guideline, not merely for your body, but to discipline the body so that it will take your soul on a journey back up there. Mm. To be amongst those beings or that being, if you want to say that one, who created or grew you. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Mm -hmm. So we look at the word beginning, reshith, mm -hmm. right? What do you come out with? A meaning first or in this place or at that chief point. The root of the word being rushi, like I said, or the head, the head of a thing, the captain, the chief, the first, the far front. Mm -hmm. That's that same statement. And then, okay, Genesis chapter 8, verse 5. Somebody want to go there and see what it says? And the waters decrease, mm -hmm. continuing until the tenth month. And the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. Where you have tops of the mountains? Mm hmm. You have the word Rashis again at the head of the mountains. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing happening. 
-hmm. That thing repeats again in Genesis chapter 11 verse 4. It also repeats again in Genesis chapter 28 verse 12. Mm -hmm. So you find that ray. Mm -hmm. You hear that ray sheesh? Mm -hmm. That's nothing but the Egyptian way of saying Ra. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians said Ra, Ray. Mm -hmm. You spelt it R-A, mm -hmm. Ra, when they spelled it R-E mm -hmm. and pronounced it Ray like the rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. You're looking at Ray Sheesh. Who was there at the beginning, in the beginning of the creation? Ray. Mm -hmm. Who's called in ancient Egypt, Amun Ray. That's right. Or Amun Ra. Mm -hmm. Who was at the beginning of things. Is that the same? The Greeks are the ones who took that word, Ray, and pronounced it Ra. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14, you see the word Amun there, and you know that that Amen is nothing but it's used with a definite article in front of it again, mm -hmm. right? Is the Amen, and that Amen was an Amen Ray who was at the beginning of the creation of the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, and you see how the Hebrew creation starts its beginning with Yahweh. Genesis 4, 26. Somebody want to read it? And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. At that point, mm -hmm. men called on a Lord, a Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Before that point, there was no Yahweh to call on. There was no prayers to Jehovah. Mm -hmm. At that point, when Enos came on the scene, Seth's son, mm -hmm. that's when they called on him. That's another beginning. That's the beginning of prayer oh, okay. to a Yahweh, not to the original creators, the Elohim. And you have been praying to Yahweh ever since. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus Christ is a physical manifestation from the Elo, which he said, Eli, Eli, my God, my God. He is a Yahweh. That's why his name is Yahshua or Jesus, Yahshua, mm -hmm. which is Jah, Jehovah, Shua, saves or is salvation. He mm -hmm. admits to being a Yahweh, a physical incarnation of a God, mm -hmm. not an Elohim. So men started worshiping the physical incarnation of God mm -hmm. way down in Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. Mm -hmm. If you look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, right? Mm -hmm. It says what? These things says the Amen, or Amun, the Egyptian deity, mm -hmm. the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of Theos, the Greek word for the Elohim. This Egyptian deity, Amun, was there when the Elohim were created. And when they were being created, they watched the Yahweh's get created. Mm -hmm. And that's the Ray in the beginning in Genesis. Ray Sheesh. That's Ra. You follow? Mm -hmm. Say that again. So they actually stuck an Egyptian God or deity in the Bible? Yes. Look at Numbers chapter 5 verse 22. You see it again. It ends every prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's true. They say Amen. Amen. And Muslims say Amin. Mm -hmm. And Jews say Umaym. That is the Egyptian deity Amun Re, who was there at the beginning. If you go back and read Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, you're going to see right there where the Re was at the beginning. Then when you go back to Genesis, you see Re Shish. Mm -hmm. What do you get with the word Shish? Shish is the word six. Mm -hmm. That's the Hebrew word for saying six. Shish or Sheesh. Mm -hmm. That's also Seth. That's the son. Mm -hmm. Adam. Eve, Cain, Abel, Seth. Who's missing in this interval? One other person was there. The devil. So now let's count again and watch the number six pop up. Adam and Eve was preceded by the devil because the devil was there first and was telling them in Genesis chapter 3 what God was saying. Mm -hmm. So the devil was there. That's three personalities. Mm -hmm. And then from that you get Cain, Abel, and then Seth. Mm -hmm. That's six again. I say watch that number six because mm -hmm. it moves down through that mystical because they have a, a numeral system locked in the Bible to give you some science mm -hmm. so you can keep up with things so you can find out when things are added in or taken out. All right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at that there, you see again Shith or Sheath. The Muslims call him Shith, mm -hmm. right? And now who is he? He's the third son, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He is here to replace somebody else because mm -hmm. this is a third creation. This ain't the first creation. There's the Egyptian creation first. Mm -hmm. There's the Sumerian creation second. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Hebraic creation. Mm -hmm. That they learned while in captivity amongst the Babylonians or the Phoenicians. Mm 
who got it while being in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So you have three kind of creations already talked about that you can go to any library and look up right now. Look at the creation story of Egypt, mm -hmm. then that predates the one from Samaria, mm -hmm. and then you find the one in the Bible, the Babylonians, God came after that. Okay. That's that Seth. And it just so happens that the third name, Seth, mm -hmm. happens to be what? An Egyptian name, so took the name of an evil person in Egypt, as they make as they make it sound, because he killed his brother Osiris. Mm -hmm. But he's a salvation in Genesis mm -hmm. because he takes the place of a brother killed by an evil brother. Right. So they took the story, but they switched it around. Mm -hmm. Now look up the word Set, mm -hmm. S-E-T, in ancient Egyptian studies, and find who Set was, the brother of Osiris mm -hmm. and Isis, who killed his brother. And then find that's the same name. Now, if these Egyptian tablets predate the Bible and it's been confirmed that they do, mm -hmm. then the name Seth or Sheth that you're finding in your Bible in Genesis was taken from, Egypt. look at Genesis Egypt. chapter 4, verse 25, and read it. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, she said, has appointed me another seed. The name Seth here means compensation. Mm -hmm. Someone to replace someone else. Another zira, seed, another seed. Remember Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 when we talk about Satan and Eve's seed at conflict, enmity between them? There's that word seed again. The root of the word, like I said, is six, to appoint, to place, to apply, to be at a specific spot, at a specific time. It comes from Chaldean because the Jews are still using Chaldean calendars and they use Chaldean numbers. And that word sheath means six. And I tell you, keep the six days of creation. Mm -hmm. God rested on the seventh day. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4. And Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. Right? Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Look what it says. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from his work. He rested he on the made. seventh, so he finished his creation on the sheesh. The, six. the, six. the third point. Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, sheath. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And he was, and with the devil inclusive, he becomes a sixth point. This ain't no coincidence. These are real. These things are right in front of you. So when you, now you go back again, you're talking about in the beginning, we're looking at Genesis chapter 1, right? It says, in the beginning what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now you got a whole different meaning of that, huh? Because if you go to Genesis, what, real quick, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, to see why the heavens were created first and there were people there already. Mm -hmm. Where is it? These are the generations mm -hmm. of the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. when they were created in the day that the Lord, Yahweh, mm -hmm. God, Elohim, made, mm -hmm. you see that, made the earth and the heavens. Mm -hmm. So there were people, hosts, of, hosts there, living beings in the heavens, mm -hmm. right. and then people placed on earth. This is the true story of the beginning. It mm. does not come from Genesis. Mm. It was borrowed from the ancient Egyptian Egyptians. stories, passed through the Sumerians, mm -hmm. through the Phoenicians, and later on became the Torah that you go. The word Torah, the Greek mm. means law. Mm. Tanakh is what they call it. Any question? So are you saying that Genesis 1-1, since they use Elohim, you would have to actually start off with one first to right. be a beginning? Exactly. So the, the, the confession is that when you go to Genesis chapter 1 mm -hmm. and you see the word Elohim, mm -hmm. the plural, that means back one step becomes Elohim, the do. Mm -hmm. Back one step becomes Ella, mm -hmm. the single. Mm -hmm. And back one step becomes El, the infinite. Mm -hmm. You had three creations starting from a Chaldean deity mm -hmm. called El on down. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Starting there, L, and that L was taken over to Egypt. Mm -hmm. I'm taking, I should say taken from Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right? And when you go to your Bible, let's look at that part of the Bible, you're going to see a missing gap. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 1, you find something very strange getting ready to happen right now. This is going to really shock you, too. Right? Genesis chapter 1, when it gets to that point, it says, And the earth was what? Without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's very strange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How that jumped from in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then all of a sudden it jumps into something else. Something is missing. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 to 28, you're going to find out what was missing, what was taken out of there. Now some of y'all stay back there in Genesis chapter 1 
and 2, and then someone will move on to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 and 28. You're going to see where six verses were taken out of Genesis mm -hmm. and moved into this book that they call the collective book mm -hmm. of Jeremiah's interpretations of creation. Mm -hmm. They admit that that's what it is. What does it say? Okay, Jeremiah 4, 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. That's boho and toho. Mm -hmm. The same words used in Genesis. Read your Genesis chapter 1, going to 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the? And the earth was without form and, and, and void. Stop. And the earth was about without form, boho and toho. The mm -hmm. same word mm -hmm. is being used here. Without shape, without form, it was just a state of nothingness. Mm -hmm. But yet it exists. Because right. it had a beginning. Mm -hmm. Correct? What does it say in uh, Jeremiah again? Go ahead, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23, going on down. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. And again, there was no sun. Right. No sun, no light. Mm -hmm. Correct? What did y'all say, Genesis chapter 1, going into 2? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness. Mm -hmm. One says, without light. Mm -hmm. The other says, darkness. These are the same books. Same. These are the same quotes. Someone took the Jeremiah quote out, but we're going to read it with the Jeremiah quote when we go down a little further. Mm -hmm. Go back to Jeremiah again and read that. Okay, verse 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Verse 24, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I, I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heaven were fled. There was no man, no Adam there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the word there? Adam. <laughs> no Adam, right there. They have word man, but there was no Adam. This mm -hmm. is down in the book of Jeremiah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I beheld, and lo, the fruit place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. Jehovah. Presence of the Lord. This is Jehovah. Uh -huh. Or Yahweh again. And by his fierce anger. God. He's angry. Mm -hmm. Before man was created. Before mm -hmm. man was on earth. Mm -hmm. God was angry. What was what? he angry about? What was this Jehovah? What was he angry about? the war in the heavens. Oh. The conflict of the gods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Revelation. For thus hath the Lord said, Jehovah... The whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. That's number 27, go ahead. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. See, that's six verses, but they'll try to tell you is a prophecy. Mm -hmm. But they're using the same words as you They can do that in English mm -hmm. It is just a prophecy in Jeremiah about the end of the world mm -hmm. But if you look at the Hebrew This is the same language mm -hmm. And the rest of the book of Jeremiah Is not using that type of dialect of Hebrew That's a different mm -hmm. dialect totally That dialect of Hebrew belongs back in Genesis chapter 1 If you read Genesis chapter 1 First one And then started reading Jeremiah chapter 4 Verse 23 to 26 And then pick up a Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it'll flow perfectly and you'll see where someone removed things from their places and put them in another place to confuse people. Mm -hmm. Because this story here makes it look like Jehovah was there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you get to Genesis chapter 1, you don't see any Jehovah, you only see an Elohim. Right. But when you get to Genesis chapter 2, mm -hmm. all of a sudden a Jehovah pops up. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about another creation. In actuality, Genesis chapter 1 does not end at the verse uh, 31. Mm. It's 32, 33, and 34, which gives you your 7. And you find the first three verses of Genesis chapter 2 mm -hmm. really are the ending verses of Genesis chapter 1. Just read it and you'll see. Read Genesis 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. In the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Go ahead. Thus the heavens. See, and, and the evening and morning were the sixth day, thus the heaven. Yeah. It's, it's, they they made this chapter two, but yeah. it's, it's a run on. It's continuing to go on, thus the heavens and the what? The earth uh -huh. were finished, and, and all the host of them. Host of the people, the people living in heavens, people on earth, was finished, and all the host of them, and? And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which mm -hmm. he had made. Yes. And he rested on the seventh day mm -hmm. from all his work, which he had made. Mm-hmm. 
And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, mm -hmm. because that in which he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Boom. That's the end of Genesis chapter 1. Remember, mm -hmm. the old Torah or Tanakh didn't have verses mm -hmm. and didn't have chapters. Men mm -hmm. put the verses in the chapters. Mm -hmm. Men decided where they go. They was on tablets and bones and collected. They put this together. And that's how the book of Jeremiah was able to get pushed out of place. Because mm -hmm. those men were mortals making mortal mistakes. Like they're doing now intentionally with the Dead Sea Scrolls called the Qumran Tablets. Because mm -hmm. the Qumran Tablets are revealing things that they don't want the public to know. For one, they're in copper. Mm -hmm. And the only people who were writing in copper were Egyptians. Mm -hmm. saying, so they don't want that fact to come out. Mm -hmm. Because it says that these people were influenced by the Egyptians. Yeah, that sacred mm -hmm. society called the Essenes mm -hmm. were nothing but an advanced Egyptian mystical society. Mm -hmm. They broke away from the Judaic teaching when they saw Egypt inside the teachings and realized mm -hmm. this is an Egyptian doctrine that's been plagiarized. Mm -hmm. And now when you go back to Genesis, again, let me jump, I don't go too far. You go back to Genesis chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3 and look again. Mm -hmm. Now go back to Genesis chapter 2 and look at verse 4 and you'll see that that's Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Read it. The, it starts off. The, it's supposed to be the fourth verse mm -hmm. in the second chapter. But it starts off. These are the generations. Go ahead. Of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Mm -hmm. And every place of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it. To rain upon the earth. Now, that is the beginning. No, Rev. That's not the beginning. It's not. Turn to Genesis chapter 10. And let's watch them use the exact same line at the beginning of a verse. Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Okay. Read it. Now, these are the generation of the sons of Noah. Stop. What did it just say? Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. This is Genesis chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 1, and it starts off, these are the generations. Not the beginning of it, it's right there. Mm -hmm. And you go back, you find Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Now, these are the generations. The same terminology. Mm -hmm. Somebody put numbers in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. To throw off the mystical number system of the Bible is governed by the numbers 6, 7, 3, and 9. Mm -hmm. Someone purposely wanted to confuse people. They didn't want them to get into the meaning of this and find out the Bible is an Egyptian book. Mm -hmm. Find out it covers Egyptian culture, the rituals, the doctrine, the laws, the gods, everything from circumcision mm -hmm. to bar mitzvah, all of those found in Egypt. The Hyksos, who were really the Israelites, mm -hmm. who were in bondage for 430 years in mm -hmm. one part of Egypt, and it wasn't a land called Ramesses, as you find Exodus, because there's no such land called Ramesses. Mm -hmm. Ramesses was a person, mm -hmm. and when you say Ramesses, all you're saying is Ra and Moses. Mm -hmm. Ra, Moses, which is Ray Moses, mm -hmm. the head of Moses, the father of Moses, the God of Moses. Mm -hmm. Not making Ramesses Moses' father. Right. Is that what the name means? Moses, as you're using in your Bible, as a person who founded the Torah, the mm -hmm. father of Judaism, mm -hmm. his name Moses, Mus or Mose, is an Egyptian name. They'll say that's because his mother left him in the Nile. Yes. What was his mother doing in the Nile? <laughs> that's because they had migrated over there uh, from the land of Canaan. You know, with Jacob. Well, why they have to migrate over there? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the land of Canaan became barren. Why did the land of Canaan become barren? If God promised them everlasting covenant and gave them that land, why did it become barren? Mm -hmm. How could God make a promise to you to give you a land and then the land become barren? And right. then some pagans on the other side who worship dogs and crocodiles and all of that, you got to go over to them and beg for them to feed you. Mm -hmm. They become your God. If God provides a land for you and provisions in that land, mm -hmm. and then you have to leave that land and those provisions mm -hmm. and go to another group of people who call themselves human gods like the Egyptians mm -hmm. are thought to have done, mm -hmm. then you in actuality are going over there and worshiping those people and worshiping mm -hmm. their way because they Egyptians took in the children of Israel, as you say, mm -hmm. in your Bible and provided for them. And mm -hmm. Joseph worked his way up and became a leader and then the family came and they settled there. And then when a new Pharaoh came in, mm -hmm. when Sefti the first went out and Ramesses came in, Ramesses did not want to let the Hebrews go. Mm -hmm. All that are stories you made up. They're not true. The names are there. You change things around. There's no mm -hmm. records of it. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel were not. There was in a place called Avaris. Mm -hmm. The word Goshen, you'll find out later, is, a, it was, is Goshen is way over near Judea. Mm -hmm. It's not in Egypt. There's no Egyptian records about no Goshen. Mm -hmm. can make up all the similarities you want. Mm 
There was no such thing. Yes, there was a group of people who had tassels on their garbs who came into Egypt, you find on the walls of Seti, and they have this pink skin like Solomon. It's called with dog beds, and they have all the Judaic traditional clothes on, and they did ease their way in. And they did stay in Egypt and conquer for 430 years, and they got pushed out by Atmos and Kopmos. Mm -hmm. Notice the names, Atmos and Kopmos, Moses again. Yes. And then they got chased across the burning sands, mm -hmm. across all up into the land of Canaan, where they got chased out of there. And their chief priests or their chief king's names were stuff like Jacob Har, mm -hmm. Jacob L, and Jacob Ann. And Jacob happens to be the word Yahweh, or the Hebrew word for Jacob, whose name was changed Israel. Now these were Egyptian pharaohs named Jacob. There's Egyptians called Moses. There's Egyptians called Ab, Ra, and Temet, which becomes Abraham. These, there's Egyptians called Maria. The name Meret is a Maria, where you get the word Mary from, which is going to be Moses' sister. Hello? Somebody's lying to you. Aaron? Aaron in Hebrew is Harun. That's Har. There's another Hebrew name. Someone has been confusing you. Someone has been taking your soul on a journey like the man in the neighborhood who's stimulating you with faith and belief, screaming up and down and jumping up and down, but he does not have your best interest in mind and heart because he doesn't know how to read. He's blind. So what do you have? The blind leading the blind. You have people going around telling people that they're ministers and they're pastors and they're going to save people's souls and they haven't even done their homework. They haven't studied the language. They haven't researched ancient Egypt. They haven't even studied the land of Canaan where the so-called Israelites supposed to have came out of when they went over into Egypt. They'll find out there was no land of Canaan. The real name of the land in the Bible is Kedman. And that's also another name they have for Adam. They don't have no clue of what's taking place. What we're dealing with here is Egyptian Stories. The story of Joseph is found on tablets, but it's not Joseph. It's called the two brothers, and it's on tablets in ancient Egypt. The story is exactly the same. It talks about how a guy came into Egypt and how the one of the Pharaoh's wives would wanted him and how he refused. But it's not a Jewish story. It's not a Bible story. It's an Egyptian story from a conflict taking place in that culture. Don't you find that strange that you have everything? that you hear in your Bible and your Quran in Egypt and it predates the Bible and the Quran don't you find it strange don't you want to know if you've been deceived of course no one likes to accept the fact that someone made a fool out of them let alone a fool out of you for 400 years and taught you their way and made you think that God looked like them and made you think that he died for your sins and then promised you to go to a heaven where you sit around and do nothing forever. How convenient. No one wants to come back now and face the reality that they have been misguided, that they have been lied to. But do you really want to know the truth or do you want to stay in ignorance? If you want to know the truth, you want to really get down to the facts about who you are and that will stimulate the greatness in you and your children and your children's children and you won't have so much of what's going on in our lives to destroy us. We'll have a better outlook on ourselves. Our children have a better outlook on themselves. They won't be so easily led to drugs and misconduct and evil doings and all the bad things that destroy the family and the community because they'll have a sense of worth. They'll know they built pyramids. They don't know that they built our blessings. They did things with their own hands that the present day constructions companies marvel at. Moving slabs of stones, erecting stones hundreds by hundreds of tons. And man can't figure out today how it was done. Your people did it. But when you go now and you look at any cathedral, any mosque, or any synagogue, there's nothing there that says any divine interpretation. All the workings, all the crafts, and all the tools still exist today. Anybody can figure out how any church was built, how any synagogue or any masjid was built, but they can't figure out how you built those pyramids. And they look on the walls and they see your face there, they see your skin there, they see your nappy hair, they see your dark skin, they see your thick lips, they see your big hips, they see all all the Negroid traits right there on the wall so they can't deny who they are and who they were. The thing is where did they end up? And I read before to you that the Bible says that those Egyptians were scattered all across the world. Everywhere you go you'll find us. We are here in the West rising right now. Right. This is our legacy. Jesus concept 
God concept, Blessed Mother Mary, the virgin birth, the Holy Ghost. These are Egyptian doctrines. Don't you want to be back where you belong? I mean, it's the same Christ concept. It's the same salvation. It's the same rapture. It's the same heavenly father. It's the same aversion conception. Only it's a real story and not the Romans and the Greeks version of us where they change the complexion of the people. Like I said, I let a man called Michelangelo draw pictures of God to look like one race when in fact God looks like another race. When it talks about a culture and puts it way over in the Middle East and fabricates a Judaic culture or a Christian culture and calls it the original culture when in fact it was not that it was Egyptian mysteries wouldn't it be better to know that the symbolism that you read in your Bible came out of Egypt and to know that you're the real mothers and fathers of that symbolism that the Masonic orders the Shriners the Knights of Columbus the Alhambra the Eastern stars the daughters of Isis wouldn't it be better to know all of that started with you that you're not just a Prince Hall Freemason accepted by them in Boston but in fact that your descendants as Moors descendants of the Egyptians taught George Washington and in terms they got the whole concept of Freemasonry from us and then took it and Greekized it, Romanized it, then took down off the altar the Egyptian Book of the Dead and put on the Holy Bible and opened it to certain chapters, took the tools that you see in ancient Egypt still on the wall and attributed them to themselves and took the rituals and the mysteries and the passwords and changed them around to the point where they don't even know what they mean but they're all Egyptian words. Wouldn't it be nice to know that all that is you? Well, it's you. You are the original Egyptians. Christ was an Egyptian. God the Father was Egyptian and the Blessed Mother Mary was the Egyptian known as Osiris, Isis, and Horus. And you get the same blessings, only you're going direct. Like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father but by me. You're going direct now. You're not using a watered down version. You're not using watered down language. You're not using poor translations and poor interpretations. And you're not using Greek sized versions where they give you an inferiority complex by telling you that God looks like a Caucasian or God looked like a. Well, I don't think he was Caucasian, but he was in the Middle East. And the people in the Middle East, who are they? Do some research and find out the original people of Jerusalem, the original Chaldeans, or of Chaldea where Abraham was born, was black. Do a, some search and find out the original people because they call it Iraq today, but Iraq was called Babylon. Those original people in Babylon, the original Babylonians, Nimrod. Nimrod was black. Cush's son, Cush means black. Ham means black. All the people you're talking about were black people. Starting from your Adam down. And there was two Adams in the Bible. You just got to know how to read it. If you look at Genesis 1 and 2, you see there's two stories. One is an individual called Adam. And the other is a whole group of Adamites called Adum, which is clear right there in Genesis. But people don't want to see that. The ministers can't read it. And therefore, congregations and souls are being lost. They're being sopped up by the devil daily. All right? Yes. So now we're, we're going to continue this one next Class. You've been listening to Reverend Dr. Malachi Z. York L., the pastor of the Egyptian Church of Christ, right here in Athens, Georgia, in a question and answer forum. If you would like to receive a copy of this tape, you can email us at Egypt 3 times 3 at AOL.com, or you can even visit our website at www.egyptianmysteries.com. Remember, that's Egypt with an I and not a Y. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at area code 706-546-1796. Again, that's 706-546-1796. And if you're in Athens, Georgia, and you would like to visit our bookstore, it is located at 3701 Atlanta Highway, Suite 38, at the Mission Square Mall, better known as the Pink Mall. The telephone number is area code 706 227-1111 That's area code 706-227-1111 And remember Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God The music you've been listening to is by the great Doc McKenzie You can find his music at any local gospel store Thank you for listening to WBKZ 880 